Good afternoon. It's Wednesday. We're all here. You're here. I know people are still popping in. The favorite time of the week. The tulip collaboration. It makes me so happy. I always remember to brew the coffee. I've been sucking it down already, I'll be honest. I just started without you because I thought, oh, I need to be caffeinated. But now I have a little more. But it's only one cup that's left, so I guess you're going to have to keep me going because I don't have enough caffeine on hand to expand. So welcome. We've got a full house filming before the live studio audience, you know, the whole thing. So yes, the class is in here with me today, which is pretty exciting. Then we have teacher Marisa and teacher Michelle. Creative Parker and Creative Caledonia is in here as well today. Virtually, Susie's joining us from afar, and so yeah, it's a full house. I bet you David is out there, and possibly Anna, and I bet you Carolyn is out there. I think we've got her online as well. So, you know who we are. Now let's find out who you are. Go ahead, type in your city, let us know where you're from and start to converse amongst yourself. Get to know each other. I have a question for you. I'll throw it out right here at the very beginning. For those of you in the UK, yes, those of you in the UK, who's looking to hire and who's looking for work? I have a graduate that is going to be looking to be employed out there. So let's throw it out. What's going on in the UK? I'm going to be reaching out to a few of my friends to see what they can help us with, but I thought who better than the tulips to let me know. And if you are looking for help, we've updated our job listing. So if you want to make sure you're on there, go ahead, send me your information. Send it to Rose, R-O-S-E, like the bloom, rose at royaldesigninstitute.com. That way it'll go all into the master email. We'll all snag it and make sure you're on the job list. So let's get started. We're going to be talking flowers because that's kind of fun. And talking about substitutions and talking about supply chain disruption and how you figure it out. You know, we all have our plan A. We think, oh, I'm going to be a floral designer and that's going to make me happy for the rest of my life. And this is your mission and your plan. Especially these days, it doesn't always work out quite the way we intended. Sometimes a pandemic occurs. Sometimes there's disruptions of containers. Sometimes the flowers don't come. Sometimes there's snow, ice, fires. When does it stop? So then you need to pivot using the word that started a year ago. Everybody said, oh, we have to pivot. And you have to come up with plan B. Or maybe you need plan C, D, E, F. I mean, who knows how many plans. But the key is to always have an alternative and always be ready because you can. You can do that. And one of the things that we talked about last week was that you had to be innovative, that you had to be prepared to adjust because you don't know what flowers are going to come in and then of those, what their quality might be. And we've been fortunate that we've been getting beautiful flowers, but we have had to adjust because it's not always exactly what we thought we were going to have. And uh, last week you saw my crooked liatris and I shared with you how you can still sell that. You paid for it, you need to sell it and make it wonderful. Another technique that I talked about last week was the container. And many of you loved the head container. And I thought this time I'd show you another way of personalizing and adding value to your designs with things that are going to be easy. I just have a standard clay pot. Okay, so it's just like you would plant a plant in. It's not waterproof. So I have a liner with a little bit of foam. I put a false bottom in so that it lifted it up. Okay, But I wanted it to be more than just a clay pot. So those of you that have been in advanced floral design, you know this. 3M Super 77 is your friend. The spray glue. When we do the segment on which glues for which technique and how you work with them, 
You know, the spray glue is wonderful for a flat surface that's very lightweight. So I took individual leaves, Let's see if I can find them back here. There we go. Beautiful oak leaves. These were left over from class. Actually, they probably weren't left over. I just stole them from the class, but uh, sorry guys, uh, I had to have them. And so I just took individual leaves and plucked them off and then sprayed the back with the 3M Super 77 spray glue and then just enhanced around the pot to give it a more personalized look. Now, I could go a step further and when you're working with any design, if you elevate it, you add value. So taking a plant saucer, this is just a saucer to a clay pot, and then adding on U glue, which I don't need a whole strip. I think I'm going to get some dashes. No reason to waste the entire strip. But if you take the U glue, again, think about your glue lessons, and we're all having to adjust with glue but the U-glue dashes, pretty perfect. While I do this, Marisa, Michelle, what's going on out there? Well, I have a lot of tulips clocking in. I can barely keep up with them. And of course, they've all started their little chat. But Debbie and Janet, Leslie, Vicki, Roxanne, Drake from Salt Lake, Avery, Leslie, Veronica, Debbie, and Therese is clocking in from over the pond over the pond, so maybe she has a clue about UK employment, okay, Therese? And then over here on Facebook, I also have Drake as well over here. Whoa, oh, he's <laughs> double he's dipping. Two 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 and I also have Nikki, John, Andrea, Chris, Joe, Nicole, Maria, Carl, Robin, David, Jim, Rose, Renee, Evangeline, Olga, we have two Janets, Lisa, and we also have Jackie who's joining and says our her daughter is in the class. Is that one of your moms? Oh yeah, that'd be my mom. <laughs> Hi Jackie, yes, Terrace is right face to face with me here, so they got it up close and personal. So you get to know that she really is here and she's really been coming to flower school. And today she actually dressed to match her arrangement. It might not have been intentional, but I was like, it made my day. I was like, oh my gosh, she matches her flowers. Um, so yes, yeah, she's here, so good. Now Carl, you said was on, and Carl, you're going to have to remind me because this is something that everybody should know but you posted something the other day about some, and it just struck me, what a great marketing technique. And I don't even remember now what it was, but you did something marketing your own business. And I thought that's brilliant. And if you know what I'm talking about and would be willing to share, I mean, maybe you don't want to share and I won't make you share, but tulips share. Um, and if you would just kind of type in there what it was, because there was something that you did on a marketing for your business that I thought, that is brilliant. But I just don't remember now what it was. Now I'm continuing to enhance by taking a straw flower and using the U-glue dash and just enhancing. So now when you're trying to adjust and pivot and trying to figure out, oh my gosh, what do I do? How can I do this? One of the things you can do is focus on the container. And I know there's a shortage of containers too. I'm not going to lie about that. There is a shortage of containers, but there are containers. So your job is to figure out how to take those containers and beautify them, make them more special so that then you can service your customer with a value added item that makes them happy. Then, thinking about basic floral design, once you get started and you have your container, it's personalized, it's beautiful, work on unity. Remember your elements and your principles? So, since I have leaves down, I bring leaves up. Maybe even break the line of the container, something you learn the very first day of flower school, breaking the line. And then by the second day of flower school, you're working on elements and principles and getting that. So now we have breaking the line. I'm working with a central binding point. I don't know if that was my intention on this design, but I guess that's where I am. So uh, 
But you know what? It wasn't. I was going to do one-sided. So you know what? We're just going to flip this around and say now I'm working with a back binding point. Oops, and I lost a leaf. Oh my gosh. So you know sometimes you even have to pivot with the designs that you're making because you change your mind or you forget what you were doing. I forgot, so there's that. What else is happening out there? Well, I have a first timer. Savannah is joining us and she's super excited. Welcome Savannah and all you tulips out there. Greet Savannah, make her feel special. We like new tulips and we love to have people join us and when you find us the first time it can be a little bit intimidating because everybody starts their collaboration and all of a sudden a newbie goes, oh my gosh, they all know each other. And that's true. And how cool is that? And if you don't know each other yet, get to know each other. We're better together. We're stronger together and we grow together. So get going on it. Well, over here on Facebook, uh, Lisa just found us on Facebook and just loves it. Hi, Lisa. And so those of you, let Lisa know she's welcome and that we are happy to have her here. And I don't know, does anybody know what variety of leaf this is? I don't actually know. It's a lovely fall colored leaf, but I don't know the variety. Tulips, any of you know what this is? That one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a type of uh, Nandina. No. That's what they told me at the market. Really? Yes. Are you sure? I mean, you're like, I don't know. Well, so they were like, the, the checkout woman was like, I don't know. And then I asked someone behind me. She's like, oh, yeah, it's a type of Nandina. And she was very, I was like, oh, okay. So. Well. It's pretty. It's gorgeous. I would have not guessed that. Interesting. Yeah, it was in the middle market. Okay. And they do get some interesting things there, which is kind of fun. Carnations, okay. I'm going to use them in this arrangement. Now, one of the things that you need to be prepared for in your pivoting and your planning and adjusting is sometimes flowers come in too tight, too new. They're not as attractive. And I get calls all the time, students saying, my flowers are not as pretty as your flowers. Where do I get pretty flowers? And they really are just as pretty if you know how to take care of them. So all of a sudden, it's a beautiful flower. Now, sometimes you're looking for something that isn't quite this. Maybe you're not looking for a carnation. Maybe you're looking for a peony. So what would you do if you don't have peonies and you have a client that wants peonies? Now, if you've seen our Tulip Tuesday tips, you know what you do. But in case you haven't, I'll show you. When you do a peony, you know, you need a peony, you need it to be big and fluffy and fabulous. Sometimes you have to cheat because peonies are not always available. So if you take a carnation and split it open, so I'm breaking the calyx, which causes it to flop out a little bit. Okay. Leanne, uh, Carl answered your question. Ah, good. Yeah, so it looks like a church bullet bulletin and offering envelope for churches for Christmas and uh, was also giving church bulletin paper and matching envelopes to area churches and also printing uh, the info on the back, his info. That was it. That was it. So he's doing custom papers for his church clients. And I thought, that's brilliant, because he's doing a gift to one potential client, which is made up of dozens or hundreds of other clients. Very smart move. I was impressed. Good job, Carl. So what I've done is I've opened out the carnations so that they fluff. Then, using bind wire, secure them together. Now it's not a peony, but if there's no peony to be had and you need a peony, when you put this down in the arrangement, going to last as if it were a peony because I'm not cutting it off the stem. 
I'm leaving the stems there. You can see that they're still there. But I fluffed it out and it gives the appearance of a peony. And the thing that's kind of cool with this burgundy, blushy, whiny, whatever you want to call it color, is the inner seed pod that's white kind of mimics the seed pod that's in the center of a peony. So there's kind of a, a tie in there. But you can see, you can do a variety of colors. You can get that deep burgundy peony, or you can get the pink peony. If you went to the antique carnations, you can almost get it to look like a cafe au lait dahlia. Not quite, but close. So you've got choices. So when you are thinking about availability and such, think about how you can take a flower that you can get, be it the carnation, and then utilize it as a flower that you cannot get, be it a peony. Now, if you want to see that full demonstration, there is a playlist of all the Tulip Tuesdays that we've ever done. It's on the Flower School YouTube channel. Susie has it all set up so that all the Tulip Tuesdays are in one playlist. Just go to the Flower School channel, scroll down to the bottom, you'll find all the lives and you'll find the Tulip Tuesdays and you can kind of go through because there are many, many, many tips there to help you adjust things that we go through seasonally when we need to do something and we go oh but you could do it this way so much better and tulip tuesday is where you want to go to find that so check out the flower school youtube channel and i'm going to shorten this guy down just because i think it'll be so much prettier to bring it down to help break the line of the container and then leave one up tall so I'm starting to incorporate the Fibonacci spacing. So those of you from advanced, you know what I'm doing there so that you can see how that works. Michelle, what's going on? Well, two things. Marion is joining us from Dubai and it's 2 a.m. there. Oh, Marion, 2 a.m. I am honored. Oh my gosh. Thanks for joining us. It's then, pretty exciting. Anne had a question on the carnations. Uh, breaking them like that, will that shorten their life at all? It doesn't shorten their life. Isn't that amazing? They'll still drink through the stem. So that's not a problem whatsoever. It doesn't shorten the life. Now, if I hadn't bound them close together, it would continue to shatter. Let's see if I can do one here. So when I split it, if I don't bind it back together, see how the petals start to fall down? Then it's going to fall apart. But by binding it together and just fluffing it out, it doesn't fall apart. And no, it doesn't shorten the life. And those of you that do a lot of funeral work, where you're doing a pave of carnations, if you do that same split before you place it in, it covers greater surface area. So it gives you a lusher look without more blooms and more money. So it's a great way of, of working efficiently. Leanne Elizabeth over here on Facebook, who is from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, uh, is saying over there, as well as everywhere else, uh, everything is increasing in price and is having difficulty ordering merchandise, and some of their orders have even been canceled due to unavailability. Uh, but for local flowers, she's had luck with uh, places like Trader Joe's, even her own garden, foraging, and even dried materials. Brilliant. And that's what we all are having to do is to work a little bit more aggressively with alternative sources. And so utilizing your mass markets to help fill in is a good call. Utilizing your own garden, your neighbor's garden, the garden down the street ask permission, trade them flowers for the ability to go foraging, and you can have a lot more options to work with, definitely, yeah. Leanne, shout out to Janet. Sweet William can be bound together to look like hydrangea. Ooh, Ooh. Janet, that's grand. Okay, so did everybody capture that? Using Sweet William bound together can look like hydrangea. And Sweet William is a super long laster. So that's cool. And it comes in a variety of different colors too, which is pretty great. Now, 
You can see I'm working with these spray mums, and look how long those laterals are. They're wonderful. And if you are a professional florist, you know that doesn't always happen. Sometimes your laterals are so little. Let's see, like these, okay, here, these laterals, if I go and break them off, it's that long, that's, that's the full length compared to that long. So if I wanted to do an arrangement that had this up here, I'm out of luck. It doesn't happen. And I think that this winter, just because of the whole world, we'll be seeing more of the spray chrysanthemums with these little tiny laterals. So another tip that you may have already seen on Tulip Tuesday is using the stem from the chrysanthemum, then taking the bloom and actually inserting it into the pith. I know you're like, really? No. Yeah. It will drink the moisture. It doesn't die faster. It holds. And then you can use it as a tall stem. Now, you've got to hide this. You don't want the consumer, your customer, to know that. But if you are trying to make an arrangement and all your laterals are too short, you can cheat. But it's not really cheating because it works. And so extending a chrysanthemum, and if you really wanted a super long one, I suppose you could take, I'm going to just pull from here. and then go back with a longer stem and insert it in. So then you've got the two buds and a bloom all on a long, tall stem. And it, this is gonna last just as long as the others. You know, kind of amazing. A lot of these tips and tricks we learned way back in the day when flowers were not as abundant as they were for so many years. I mean, we've been able to get flowers so abundantly. There was no shortage whatsoever until now. And so all these little tips of how to deal with it when you don't have them went by the wayside. We just didn't worry about it because we didn't have to. We had beautiful flowers all the time. And now all of a sudden we're having to figure out, ooh, how do we do that? What do we do? Another technique with the carnation is to open it out okay, and even pull out some of the center. So I've got just a standard white carnation. I'm not breaking the calyx. The calyx I'm leaving intact, but I'm pulling out from the center. Leanne, question about your chrysanthemum trick. Uh-huh. Have you experimented with any other stem that the chrysanthemum can drink from? And are there any other flowers you can do that with? Great question. And I have not discovered any other flowers that that works. I've only done it with the carnations or with the chrysanthemums. I've tried other things because I thought, wouldn't that be the coolest thing ever? And I've not had luck. What I have found that's similar and you saw it in a slideshow that teacher Marisa did, and then we also did it on a Tulip Tuesday, is to use snake grass or equisetum as an extender because it has a watertight water source. So you can put flowers down in that and it works the same, but it's not flower to flower. Um, so no, I haven't found another one that does it, unfortunately, I wish I could. So now, I just pulled out the center of my carnation and it looks kind of like a lisianthus. Here's a lisianthus. Very similar. So if you're trying to get a look of a lisianthus, pulling out the center of your carnation gives you that option. It's not going to shorten the life. It's going to hold up just fine, and it's kind of beautiful. 
all of a sudden, it's a designer flower, one of a kind, handmade, just for you. <laughs> Pretty fabulous. Then if you want to take it a step further, maybe it isn't a lisianthus you need. Maybe it's an, an anemone. And you know those white panda anemones that are so beautiful that just get bruised instantly and you want to cry and you're like, oh my gosh, I need that for a wedding and I don't have it. If you take your carnation and you pull that center out, then you have your lisianthus. If you go one step further and add in what I did as I grabbed these little tiny, tiny miniature micro spray mums and I painted them black. Okay, so I just use black spray paint and then Clip it off. And just a dab of the Oasis Flow Adhesive, which you use very sparingly because you know it's in short supply too. And then pop it in and it gives you the look of the panda anemone. Now it is not the same flower. I won't deceive you. But if you have a bride or a party of some sort that was just adamant that they had to have this and you could offer that to them, you're the hero or the shero. But it's pretty grand. If you do it with a red carnation, it looks like a poppy. So like for Veterans Day. Again, you'll find it on the Tulip Tuesday playlist on the YouTube channel but very, very easy to do. Now, if you're learning from things here and you think it's kind of cool, tag a friend, invite them to join us, share this video out, because I'd love to have as many people as possible. I grabbed this, Lysianthus, too, when I was showing you, and, you know, the buds continue to open, so because we're paying more for flowers, we need to use all of the flowers. So just a reminder to you that when you get them in, don't throw away the buds. This one looked like this originally, and then I just manipulated opening it out, and that's not going to shorten the life, but now I have another bloom that I can sell at full price because it's beautiful, and it just took a little bit of manipulation. So all these little things. Now another thing you can do if you want, in fact, I'll do it on this one. Again, if you're looking for something unique, Crispedia, Billy Balls, painted black. Clip it down. Dab of glue. Leah, we might have to play with this tomorrow in class. What do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've created class monsters now. Oh, my gosh. But that's what you gotta do is play with your flowers. I think that has been something that has given me the greatest joy is once you have your basic skills, experimenting to see what else you can do. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you go, eh, whatever. Uh, you know, I failed. Whatever. Fail. First attempt in learning. My second attempt will be better. It doesn't matter. And who cares? Just do it in the privacy of your back room so nobody can see. Maybe it doesn't matter. Michelle, what's up? Well, to your point of FAIL as an acronym, the second attempt is SAIL, as in I'm sailing forward, I am successful, so FAIL and SAIL, that's always good. I love that! I had not heard that. That's very cool. And then Melanie had a question, how, how do you talk to your clients about substitutions like these? Ah, leads me right on to my next little part. Okay, so let's go there. How do you talk to your client when you don't know what you're going to get? And you don't even know what you're going to call that because it's not a panda anemone. It's no longer a lisianthus. But isn't that the coolest? I love that. I mean, that's sort of the type of thing that I, ooh, I want. You know, and it could be made into a wrist corsage because it's going to hold up beautifully. It could be done into an arrangement. It's going to live. And it's kind of funky. It's just too fun. So then, think about it. If you had deep purple lisianthus 
with vivid orange or hot pink billy balls, you can do sort of this techno craze. Kind of fun. Man, I don't know. That would actually be kind of be a cool thing to like bring into your shop and introduce new things. Like have a little section of handmade custom yeah. flowers. Right. That might be a new trend. Oh. Leanne, yeah, you may be starting something. Hey, tulips. Make up a name for it. We are trendsetters, you know? How fun is that? So I'm going to get this arrangement out of the way. Um, tomorrow it will be finished. Marisa comes in and makes all my stuff finished and beautiful. So when you see the flower pictures that we post online after, they never look like what you see here because I'm just throwing stuff in to get it so that you can get an idea. And then it, Marisa basically starts over and makes it pretty. So um, thank God for Marisa. Oh, I it. just enhance it. I don't have to start over. Ah. <laughs> well, then it's enhanced well. Let's put it that way. So when you are having to figure out how to talk to your clients and how to figure out how to sell them things, we started with it last week. And last week we talked about adapting to the floral business today. And I told you one, simplify. Make your whole life easier by simplifying. Take it so you don't have to make so many choices so that when you do have to make choices, your brain isn't tired. So I use the example of wear black and just always wear black and then you don't have to think about it. It's like, whatever, I put on a black dress and it may be the same black dress I wore yesterday and maybe the one I wore the day before then. And you know what, it doesn't matter. And then I got really bad in that I bought three pairs of black leggings, identical, and three black button-down shirts, identical. So literally I can just get up and put the same clothes on every day and still not feel guilty that I maybe should do laundry, you know, once in a while, but simplify. Then I told you that you needed to take 10 so that when you need to worry and you're stressed and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't get flowers, you go, okay, I'm going to fret about this for 10 minutes, but then I'm going to stop. That's all. I get 10 minutes, and then I'm moving on. And then I asked you to think about selling as a concept. And that's the biggest thing. When you are selling today to clients, you can't sell a specific flower. That would be a recipe for disaster. Don't sell a specific flower. Sell a mood. Sell a style, a concept, a color palette. And that will give you the flexibility to adjust to what flowers you have. And I would invite you to even go so far as to set up Pinterest boards, you'll find us on Pinterest. Uh, you'll find at Floral Design Institute, we're on Pinterest. Susie, would you link that in there so that it is? And Caledonia, if you could put our Pinterest page on there too. I should have warned you because I forgot I was going to say that. Um, Susie and Caledonia end up having to jump every time I say something and say, oh my gosh, she said that. How do I get that all linked in there in time? But set up Pinterest boards that are the moods and the styles that you want to sell. And so you might have a whole board that is moody boards, where it's got all those muted, deep purples and um, kind of neutrals and blush and smoky hues. And that's a look. That's a color palette. And so it would be flowers that go with that, but not any specific flowers. And then you might have a vibrant board. And that's kind of where I'm working on this one because I picked this hot pink. But I'm still thinking somewhat autumn, but flexible, not truly autumn, because I don't know if I'll have all autumn. So I could have a vibrant board that has these bright colors. Then adding in lots of foliage. When I teach, I tell you, you have to have three types of foliage. You must have three types of foliage. But you know what? Reality is you might want five types of foliage. The more, the better, because again, it gives you interest instantly. Then we think about mechanics 
and it's getting harder and harder to know that you can even get all your mechanical aids. So maybe you don't use mechanics that you purchase. Maybe you use mechanics that you create in your hand. So gathering foliage together and creating a nest that then will become the support for your flowers rather than having to have foam or floral netting or anything else. You're just using your design skills. The knowledge that you have in your head, in your hands, bringing it out and creating. So I've used salal, leather fern, boxwood, and fatsia. And when I choose my foliages, I try to use a statement piece, okay, so maybe the fatsia, okay, a broad leaf, maybe salal, and then maybe a smaller leaf, like the boxwood, or maybe you'd even want to go into the fern, okay, different growth format, different coloration. All of a sudden the design begins looking like a beautiful design before you've even done anything. You could go to a larger leaf, okay? Something like the Aspidistra, which is too big for that. So you might tie it up, create a knot, and then set that in. And you can see how I could set that down and just pick it up and it stays together because again, if you weave well, it's not gonna go anywhere. Practice this in the privacy of your back room the way I told you, but it really will allow you to do that. Just insert it in and then that weave holds everything together. Now, basic floral design, you know this, no foliage below your hand because you don't want anything in the water. You want everything above your hand. Your hand becomes the binding point. And it's a woven hand tie of just foliage. Now I could tie this off or I could leave it open. And to be perfectly honest, I'm going to leave it open because I want to be able to weave the flowers in easily. I don't want it so tight that I can't. If you struggle with the hand tie, just remember to hold it looser. I think that's the biggest thing is that when you struggle, it's because you're holding it too tight and you're hunched over and you're just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Loosen it out, just hold finger and thumb and you should be better than cutting it down. That way you can make sure it's all going to drink and then just set it in. And I do have this filled with fresh water that I pre-mixed with flower food because I wanted to make sure that my flowers will last as long as possible. And that way it keeps them fresher without any problem. So as you're thinking about your things and how to sell to the customer, start thinking about adjectives. And those of you that are students, you can go back to your text because we have um, that entire list of adjectives in there. Go back and refer to that and practice using those words and practice describing a lush collection of foliages in beautiful deep green, which would be different than if you did a muted collection of foliages featuring the silver gray eucalyptus because all of a sudden it's a different color palette. So start practicing those words so that it feels natural coming out of your mouth because it'll make it easier than when you talk to your customer, how do I do this? And then you go, oh, and we have beautiful flowers and they're gonna think this is a peony. I haven't told them it's a peony. I told them they were getting a luxurious, vibrant collection of blooms. 
and they go, oh my gosh, I got roses and peonies. Well, you got roses and carnations, but similar, kind of nice, don't you think? <laughs> and again, you're not going to lie. You're not going to say, oh gee, I'm sending you peonies. You're going to say, I'm sending you a luxurious, vibrant collection of blooms. And then you go to your cooler and you say, what do I have in my vibrant collection of blooms? And you just start placing it in. Marisa, what's up? Okay, we have a little conversation here about this leather fern here. Um, Lisa and Beverly are both wondering. So they've noticed uh, recently on some uh, Facebook florist pages um, that florists are questioning the scores on the back of the leather leaf. What, yeah. are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I don't have spores on my, um, and it is something that's kind of scary. When you first buy leather fern and you have not had it when it's going to seed before, it gets little black spores on the back side, and it's trying to make babies is what it's doing. It's reproducing. It's the whole sexual process. So that's a good thing. But for the client, sometimes those spores are kind of intimidating because they get it and they think they have bugs and that you delivered bugs to their house. So there's a couple of things you can do. One, set it in deeper so that the spores don't show and then just go ahead and design away and don't worry about it. You can actually pick them off, but who has time for that? You know, I, I probably wouldn't. And then some people actually avoid using um, leather fern while it is in that process. Now, you may have already bought a case and you didn't know it was going to be in that process, so now you own it. So then you have to make that decision. Do you use it tucked in low so that it gives you a base for your design but they don't see the spores, or do you pick it off? Marisa. Okay, so this is just a question for, from me. So is that like a seasonal thing when the firms want to get naughty, I guess? Or can you request without that? You know, you could probably request spore-free, but they will probably laugh at you because it is the life cycle. Um, it's much like Gaelic sleeves. I got laughed at so hard because I would call and I'd request green Gaelic sleeves or I'd call and request burgundy or you know the mahogany Gaelic sleeves and then they'd send me green when I wanted mahogany or they send me mahogany when I want green and I call and complain I'm like really I asked for it has nothing to do with the type of plant it's all one plant it's the life cycle the new growth is green the mature growth is mahogany so if it's the end of the season you're going to get mahogany and if it's the beginning of the season you're going to get green and it was almost like they felt they had to tell me the rules of sex and I'm like oh my gosh so embarrassed but yes you could ask because it is possible they have some at different stages that it would work but it's also possible they don't have any, and then you just have to adjust. So. So do you know if there is like a season though when they're more spory than others? You know, I think isn't it around now? Isn't it late yeah. summer that they've gone through their life cycle? You have that new growth, and then they get the old, and then they drop the spores and they land on the soil and then they get ready to come up as new growth in the springtime. I'm making that up, but I said it with passion and conviction, so it must be true. Um, so if somebody wanted to Google and check me, that probably would be good because sometimes I do speak from the cup, but I believe it is right about now that it's sporific. <laughs> on that segue, uh, <laughs> we have another first timer on YouTube. Her name is Karina. Karina, welcome. I'm, I'm sorry that you caught me as I'm just making things up in front mm -hmm. of everybody. Caledonia, what do you have in your world? Could you spray the back of the leather fern green to cover the sport? You could. You could spray it green and it would cover it. Um, and so it might even extend the life a little bit. I don't know. Now, we had, um, let's see, what was I going to use for this? Probably I forgot. Um, hmm. What are you I, looking for? 
Oh, I know what I was going to do. Okay. I wanted to do one more arrangement. It's like, what was I going to put it in? But I can't find it. It's like, oh yeah, you were just going to do a hand type, so it doesn't matter. So this is the my vivid one from a storyboard that I didn't tell them they were going to get peonies, that I didn't tell them they were going to get hydrangea. I didn't tell them what they were going to get. But they got beautiful flowers, and they're going to be happy. But what if they wanted it to be autumnal? All of a sudden, it's not really autumn. And that's where you would enhance then with fall leaves, which goes back to what happens if you can't get fall leaves that day? What if you don't have any? And on one of the Tulip Tuesday tips, and I think I might have done it last week too, I talked about preserving your own fall leaves. And so I went ahead and did that. I went for a walk. I took 10 um, at about 1 o'clock today and went out and gathered some leaves because it's one of my favorite things to do. And I'm working. Um, and then I brought them in. So there's just beautiful fall leaves. They were just two blocks from here. There's a whole block that's absolutely exquisite. And we had a windstorm this morning, so there was tons on the ground that people hadn't stepped on yet. So I was like, yes! Um, but... I dried them off because they were still wet from the rain. And then I took wax paper. And I pretended I was in kindergarten again. And I ironed them. So you just put your leaf down on wax paper and then wax paper over the top. And then you iron them until the wax sort of melts. You have to be careful when you pull it off because you can tear them if you aren't careful. But once you've got them off, they're surprisingly sturdy and they will last literally years. What? They do not change their color. <laughs> they do not shred. Um, one year I kind of got into a, a obsessive mode, I must say. I was very obsessed with these leaves, and so I kept going out and picking them up, and then every single night. My husband does all the cooking, you probably know that, I don't cook, but anyway, so he does all the cooking, so every night while he cooked, I would sit and iron leaves, to where literally I had thousands of leaves that I had gathered and ironed, and then I strung them on bullion wire, um, you know, like bullion wire like this, I took and um, just kind of wired it, and I strung them like that, okay? And then in my condo, we have a, a fire water thing that you're not supposed to ever hang anything on or touch or, you know, you don't even look at it cross-eyed. But I hung literally thousands of these leaves on that pipe down the entire wall of the condo, and when the fan was on, they would just kind of flutter oh. like they was outside. And I left them there um, until it was time to put up, you know, the dozens of Christmas trees. Um, <laughs> but I didn't have the heart to throw them away. So I just carefully boxed them and put them in storage. And then the next year I got them back out and they were still perfectly fine a year later. What heat on that iron for ironing those leaves? You know, I do it on medium. Somebody asked me that last week, and I was like, I don't know. I do it on medium, and then I just kind of iron until it seems melted, and it works just fine. Then I'm using a pick machine with a steel pick, which we can still currently get steel picks, and I can place them in, but if you aren't able to get a steel pick, You could always use a wood wired pick. And if you can't get a wood wired pick, you could wire and tape it. So don't let supply availability stop you. Supply availability makes you stretch your creative muscles. And look how cool, now it's autumn. Even though it's pink, it's autumn. So any color can be autumn. Marisa. I have a question from Julie. Um, she would like to know where you collect your pictures of flowers from for your uh, boards, Pinterest and things like that. Excellent point, because you have to have your own pictures. You can't steal somebody else's. That's not cool. And so 
go to your local farmer's market and take pictures of the flowers there. Go to your local mass market, take pictures. If you have a wholesaler in your area, go to the wholesaler and take pictures. Now that's not a great start for arrangements, but it gets you a few things so that you have at least a color palette that you can put together. And that's where I would start. I would just start gathering and then again, I've told you this before, invest in yourself. Make a budget every single week for flowers. And it might not be very much, but give yourself a little budget for flowers and buy flowers and make an arrangement and then take a picture of that. And every single thing you do, take a picture of it. Now my last arrangement that I wanted to do, I was watching on Facebook and there was this whole argument about whether or not you could put white in an autumn arrangement. And people were like, absolutely not. White never, ever, ever goes into an autumn palette. I thought, huh, interesting. I didn't know that. What's going on? John had a question. He was asking if you would want to use carnations in the arrangement that has the carnation peony. You could, I probably wouldn't because the colors would match and then it would devalue the actual peony. And I don't know if I did put any in there or not, but I would tend to either do them all as peony blooms or none as peony bloom. But if you did peony and carnation side by side and they look so much similar, it would devalue all that effort you went to. So I would say no. Uh, I would definitely look at keeping it separate. Yeah. So the question was, can you put white in autumn? And I say, yes, you can. You have to think about how you use it and plan what is appropriate. And with the white, blues might be good. And if I'm going to blues, I might want to go to the blue green of a eucalyptus. And then if I'm going that route, going to the agonis, which even brings in that sort of purpley hue, so I'm sticking to that color palette. So rather than switching to the darker greens, going to the off colors, because that's going to make it look more cohesive, unified, give you the style you want. I'm just pulling things out here, getting it stripped down as quick as I can because I want to do that. Other questions? What else is going on out there, people? If you haven't shared this, share it. If you haven't come to flower school, come to flower school. I want to see you here because if you don't come to flower school, what am I going to do? We like to teach flower school, so keep us in business. Keep us having fun. We love to play flowers, and um, I can't imagine what I would do if I didn't do flower school. When I grow up, I still want to be a flower school. Uh, so. Leanne, don't forget you have some beautiful magnolia behind you too that may look pretty in there. Ooh, that would give me that deep, deep green. Yes, thank you. So magnolia would be gorgeous with this. So I've stripped things down. Whenever you're doing a hand tie, if you strip it ahead of time, it's easier. It just allows you to work more efficiently. Then I have some teasel, which you can buy teasel or you can walk down by the railroad tracks and pick teasel. I mean, it's right here, wild, all the time. Um, this time, I think we bought it. I think you bought this this yeah. time? Yeah. yeah. And it's already dried, and it's very prickly on my hands, so I'm going to be a little bit careful. And then some beautiful magnolia with that bronze background. And maybe breaking it down a little bit. And that deep green, isn't that gorgeous? Then I can bring in hydrangea. I find it funny, Leanne, that people, some people are saying don't use white in fall because Lisa pointed out, what about all the white pumpkins? You know, that's yeah. what was I thought was kind of interesting because right now, white autumn is super on trend. We have a graduate that does a ton of white stuff. She does 
white home decor, white arrangements, white, I mean, basically her world is white and her autumn is exquisite. And I'm always thinking, well, then why would you not allow white in your world? I mean, that just seemed so wrong. But if you use white, you do have to use it wisely. And that's really all it comes down to. Any color can go with any palette if it's used correctly. Now, if you don't use it correctly, then it's going to be wrong. But that could be if it was orange, which you would say, yes, orange is an autumn color. But if it's not used correctly, then it's still wrong. We have Michael, um, oh, where did he go? Michael has actually um, taken carnations, grouped them, and sprayed them like hydrangea, like lime green mixed with purple and burgundy, pink and green, and used really low. You can't even tell. So true. Michael, that's, that's brilliant. And that's, that's what we're all having to do right now, is learn to work with what we have, learn to adjust, and make things work for us instead of against us. And that's where education is key. I mean, it's, it's just, I can't impress upon it enough. Invest in yourself, invest in your education. Learn this stuff so that you can do it. Because if you don't know it, then how can you adjust? Marisa? Rebecca just made a wonderful comment here. And she says, also look at the colors in nature. You can have white snow on the ground in fall. And white snowberry is a beautiful winter and fall item. I noticed we had some of that here the other day. There was some snowberry. Yeah, what type of, uh, well, we have someone asking if those are white Viking palms. No, these are white miniature Gerberas. So this is a miniature Gerbera. Then I've got miniature carnations, teasel. I haven't been very good about naming my flowers, have I? I apologize. So then, if I was in retail, and I wanted to have a white Pinterest board, I could do white for autumn, I could do white for winter, I could do white for summer, I could do white for spring, and show that whole spectrum on a white Pinterest board, and you'd be great. If you want some ideas for how to work with Pinterest, go ahead and you know follow us on Pinterest because uh, Susie works really hard to keep us up to date there with postings um, and Parker works really hard to make sure he sizes the pictures so that they're ready to go on Pinterest. Um, you know, we try to keep that out there so you can get ideas from us and I invite you to explore that because maybe it will give you that little bit of oomph that makes you think, oh, that's how I do that. That's what I do. Now, there are so many more things that you can do that allow you to adapt to the shortages, that allow you to adapt to the pricing increases, because we can't lie, everything is way more expensive than it ever was. If you go to the Flower School YouTube channel, scroll down to the bottom, there's all the Tulip Tuesdays, which is just filled with tips like this, and then also past lives, which there is a whole live that is on the business of floral design. So it talks more about the pricing and how you can be successful and little techniques that you can work with. Then, if you aren't getting our newsletter already, subscribe to the newsletter. That way you'll get the updates as they come in. And that way we're all set. So I have one last request for you before we say goodbye. And then all of these will get posted onto social media later this week after we get them all prettified so that they're ready to look lovely. But my last request to you is for each and every one of you on Facebook and YouTube, I'm writing up for the rest of the year the inspirational quotes. And I'm wondering if you have a favorite that you would like included. 
Because I was sitting there going, hmm, what would be good? So if you have an inspirational quote that you think should be shared out worldwide with the tulips, look it up and type it in here. I know that's going to take you some work. Sorry if you're on your phone. But type it in. Make sure you list who said it so that we can give proper recognition. And I'm going to pick, I don't know, my five favorites? I don't know. We'll figure it out. If there's a hundred favorites, we may have to do a hundred quotes, but I doubt if we'll get a hundred favorites. But if you could take a moment and if you have a favorite quote that you think is appropriate for all of us in the tulip world, type it in there in the name and maybe you'll see it come out in one of our future Thursday Thoughts emails because we need your help. I need your help. So next week, we're back to Halloween. No more shortage stuff. No more adapting. We're going to need to go back to a spooktacular collaboration with Teacher Marisa. So I know you don't want to miss that. We'll see you all next Wednesday, 3 o'clock Pacific time. Same place, same time, same channel with Teacher Marisa and Halloween. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye for now.